Crim 2 News 10 at 10 begins now with Mark Henrahan and Jeremy Legoo. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Crem 2 News 10 at 10, where we give you more news in less time. We start with some breaking news tonight. Police say two people have been rushed to the hospital after a stabbing in West Central Spokane. Crem 2's Connor McAvoy is live at the scene tonight with what we know at this hour. Connor? Yeah, Mark, that's right. I'm here in West Central Spokane on West Sharp Avenue near North A Street where the whole incident took place. You can see right there uh, there's a home with police tape uh, across it as well as a Spokane Police Department vehicle right there in front of it. Now, what we know so far is that police say that there were two roommates that were taken to the hospital for injuries involving uh, a, a stabbing involving those two roommates. SPD says one of those roommates was taken to the hospital for life threatening injuries while the other was taken to the hospital for for serious injuries. Now, SPD, as you can see, is on the scene right now investigating, and they're asking people to avoid this area here in West Central Spokane. Again, that is West Sharp Avenue near North A Street. You can see right there. So SPD is going to be on the scene here investigating and again asking people to avoid the area. Now, this is a developing story, and as we work to get more information, we'll bring that to you as it becomes available. In Spokane, Connor McAvoy, Crem 2 News. Connor, thank you very much. All right, our other top story tonight, the forecast as parts of the inland northwest, including Spokane, are set to see freezing temperatures for the first time this fall. Let's get right to Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Lagu live in the Weather Center with more on this weather impact alert day. Jeremy? Mark, I'm loving it. it. This is what we've been waiting for. It's October. We're supposed to be this kind of cold, and we are already in the 30s. 39 degrees here in Spokane. And for that reason, got one of those weather impact alert days. Cool. Let's move on. Let's talk temperatures. 39 here, 29 already in Deer Park, 32 in Sandpoint. Temperatures are already below freezing in a lot of locations. We are going to continue to drop with those clear skies, and I think we make it down below freezing here in Spokane. You're in the 20s in Deer Park, and not just 29, we're talking low 20s. 30 in Moses Lake and 31 in Pullman and Moscow. It's going to be cool, but that's all because we got rid of that cloud cover from earlier today. We have a nice swath of dry air settling in overnight, and with that atmospheric trough in place, that cold air overhead means we have perfect opportunity to watch our temperatures dive. Tomorrow, though, it's sunny for the start, and we'll climb up to 54 degrees. Saturday, 65. Sunday, 70. I know I said we wouldn't hit it again, but I like the drama of having a chance of doing it, so it's back on there. All right, I'm with you on that one, Jeremy. Thank you very much. Turning to a disturbing story out of Montana tonight, a 911 caller reported his friend was killed by a bear inside his tent, but tonight police believe he was brutally murdered instead. According to CBS, 35-year-old Dustin Jersom was found dead in his tent this weekend near Big Sky, Montana. His friend grew concerned after Dustin did not check in and then went to his campsite. After finding his body, he called first responders saying Dustin seemed to have been mauled by a bear. However, upon investigation, officials found no sign of a bear attack, but believe Dustin was hacked to death. Now law enforcement is warning people in that area to remain vigilant as they search for a suspect. And tonight's search efforts still underway east of Mount Rainier for two missing Navy pilots. Their EA-18 Growler crashed Tuesday during a training mission. The jet wreckage was found yesterday, but the status of the two people who were on board is still unknown. As for what caused the crash, too early to say, but aviation experts say that jet has some of the best technology available and should have alerted the crew to any obstacle. Possibility that they had controlled flight into terrain. Basically, they just ended up flying it into the uh, hills uh, because of one reason or another, human factors. Or it could be that something happened to the jet and they were unable to contain it in time. The Yakima County Sheriff's Office, which is assisting the Navy, says they have faced mountainous terrain, cloudy weather, and low visibility during the search. For now, the search continues. We are still waiting to learn the names of the missing crew members. Also new tonight, a Seattle therapist facing several child pornography charges is on the run tonight. The man was arrested for the crimes, but posted bail and surrendered his passport. The King County Sheriff's Office says he used a fake passport and booked a flight to Shanghai. Law enforcement at SeaTac Airport arrested him, but released him and allowed him to board the flight because there was no warrant for his arrest. In other news, Idaho is adding another step in their execution process after a lethal injection attempt failed back in February. In an effort to bring you more to every story, Krem 2's Connor McAvoy spoke with an expert on the death penalty tonight. Doctors are now able to access deep veins for those faced with the death penalty in the state of Idaho. That includes the neck, 
chest, and arm. A vein that is more directly connected and more proximate to the heart. In 2023, Governor Little signed into law the ability to use a firing squad as a method of execution, but only if the drugs needed for injection were not available. Former Idaho Attorney General David Leroy says this new method is a way of having a doctor be involved in the process if standard IV lines fail. With the new policy, the state of Idaho has changed the execution chamber so doctors can administer the injections. A new method for all of those going forward facing the death penalty in Idaho. To simply be a more humane, more certain, uh, and medically common type of approach uh, to this very uncommon procedure. Something on the minds of many waiting on a ruling after the scheduled trial of Brian Koberger if he is found guilty. The prosecutor in Latah County has indicated that if a guilty conviction is had, he will go ahead and also present to the jury the possibility of a death penalty. An intent to pursue a death penalty that now has an extra step, Leroy says, adds protection to those on death row. Well, I would expect uh, the Department of Correction to use whatever appropriate medical judgment suggests in the unique case of Mr. Creech is the right place. To that was Connor McAvoy reporting. Since the pandemic, Washington's roads have seen the highest increase in traffic fatalities in the entire country. Now, whatever app you're using while navigating could also help the state reduce those deaths. Recently, the state has purchased data being collected by those map and traffic apps showing where drivers are speeding and when they're using their phones. Cell phone data collected between 2022 and 2023 shows 25% of drivers use their cell phones during their commute. Cell phone usage rates were more than twice as high on residential streets versus highways. Which is super dangerous because that's where all the kids are and people are walking and dogs are out, whatever. Uh, but it also suggests that they're uh, moderating what they perceive as their risk because they're going slow. Now, the state wants to make it clear that getting data about your driving habits comes without any names attached and they're not looking to mail out tickets. The state says it's just trying to find a new way to make Washington streets and highways less deadly. And now to our night beat with a quick look at the day's top stories. We are now less than three weeks away from the election and in the race for Washington governor, the newest polling shows Democratic candidate Bob Ferguson with a large lead over Republican candidate Dave Reichert. The poll asked 700 likely voters who they would pick if the election was today. 50% of them said Bob Ferguson, while 34% said they'd choose Dave Reichert. 16% say they're still undecided. The poll also asked who voters trust more on the key issues Ferguson leads in every category. He also has the most commanding lead on the issue of reproductive rights. Reichert, a former sheriff, had the strongest showing on the issue of public safety, but he still trailed Ferguson by 14 points. This Survey USA poll was commissioned by King 5, the Seattle Times, and the UW Center for an Informed Public. And following the release of today's poll, both candidates shared what they think is the most critical difference between the two of them to help you decide. But for undecided voters, but really for all voters, our message is the same, whether you're Republican, Democrat, or undecided, which is, look, we're facing many challenges as a state. We need someone who can come into the governor's office and be a change agent to make improvements on public safety, homelessness, affordability, but at the same time defending our core freedoms, like reproductive freedom. And I'm the candidate that fulfills both of those needs for our state. Well, the, the most critical difference is um, I'm, I'm not spreading fear and telling lies. Um, I am running on a record uh, that I've created over my career. And um, the, the message is that we can, um, we can bring Washingtonians together. Uh, there's an opportunity here for us to have a moderate Republican governor who can work with a Democrat House and a Democrat Senate. And what I hope that opportunity gives us is to set an example in this state how really the two parties can work together. And earlier today, the U.S. Senate debate between Senator Maria Cantwell and challenger Dr. Raul Garcia was held by Cairo 7 in Seattle and the League of Women Voters. They touched on several topics, including a top concern going into this year's election, which is housing. I am the leader in the United States Senate with a Republican colleague, Todd Young of Indiana, to increase the capacity of the affordable, low-income housing tax credit. This tax credit is 95% of the affordable housing that gets built, gets built with this tax credit. 
VA loans have worked because veterans are, don't have to come up with a down payment to buy a house. I want to turn that into the regular public. Let's have programs with our lenders that our regular citizens could afford to buy a house without a down payment. They still have to qualify. But and that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just head to our website. That's creme.com. And that was your Creme 2 News 10 at 10, where you get more news in less time.